Well, we're three weeks from SEC Media Days and we're already talking about football. That's not all. Trevor Relaford joins us to discuss the NBA draft. It's all on Tider Insider TV, which starts right now. Go inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Kerry Harris. Well, he played more basketball games at Alabama than any other player in Crimson Tide history. And tonight, Trevor Relliford joins us on Tider Insider TV to discuss his future and more, including his coach, Anthony Grant. And good evening, everyone. Welcome into Inside, Tider Insider TV, presented each and every week, of course, by Buffalo Rock. Filling in tonight for Gary Harris, I'm B.J. Milliken, joined, as always, by the Tider Insider himself, TiderInsider.com's Rodney Orr. Rodney, of course, we always have to start by cracking our, our Pepsi. About that. Thank you for Buffalo Rock being our title sponsor. And, of course, I'm going to do the Gary Harris thing, and I'm going to take a drink. So do you want to do a cheers or no? No cheers? Okay. There we go. And of course, as always, after we do that little product placement, we start with our Tuscaloosa Tractor top story. The best always rise to the top. It's time for the TITV top story presented by Tuscaloosa Tractor. And our top story tonight, good news for an Alabama signee. Defensive lineman Johnny Dwight was one of three Tide signees still not on campus. Today, the Georgia native received some good news. And Rodney, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, I actually talked to his high school coach, Coach Mark Ledford, and he told me that Johnny had apparently got everything he needed in terms of the academic requirements to enroll at the University of Alabama next uh, summer term, which starts in early July. So you can expect the defensive lineman from Wilcox County down in Rochelle, Georgia, to be here um, in July. There you go. Let's look at some of his numbers. He's a big guy. He's, uh, what, 6'3", 298. Is this a guy who can come in and then hope to contribute a well, little bit early? First of all, I think he's an excellent prospect when you look at him. Uh, a lot of tools, but, you know, he played at a small school, right. and I think he needs some development, uh, certainly in the weight room, but he is a guy that, as you project down the road, is certainly someone that can make an impact maybe in a year or two. Absolutely. That's going to leave Bo Scarborough and Montrell McBride as the only two signees who haven't made it to campus. Is that accurate? Yeah, Montrell okay. McBride, yep. There you go. And we're getting closer to the season, so that means we're going to talk about point spreads. Of course, that's for entertainment purposes only. 74 days from the kickoff, and the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas saw over 200 betting lines leaked. Eight of them were Alabama games, and the Tide favorites in all of them. I don't guess that's a surprise. That includes a 21-point spread against Florida and the smallest, a two-and-a-half point spread at LSU. Now, it doesn't mean a whole lot really, Rodney, but it just shows that there's a lot of national respect for the, the program that Nick Saban has yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think Alabama's been an underdog since when? The 2009, 2009 SEC championship yeah. game against uh, Florida, which Alabama won 32-13 to handily and, you know, haven't been an underdog since. Does not surprise me that they would be the early favorite in all right. these games. But like you said, B.J., really means nothing at all yeah I mean because we really you know it's a long way in terms of the season having to play out and you know what teams could emerge just like people talking about who has a tough schedule right. I mean last year this you know, time who, who, who knew that Auburn was going to be in the national championship yeah. game and Alabama was at a nine-point favorite in that game and obviously they go on to lose that one and, and you just said 54 games in a row Alabama has been favored Number 55 is going to be that opener against West Virginia in the Georgia Dome. Their head coach, Dana Holgerson, was asked this week about the Crimson Tide, and he praised Alabama, as you would expect a, an opposing coach would do. He talked to Bruce Feldman on his podcast. He says they're going to need every day they can get to prepare for the Tide. The Mountaineers went 4-8 a year ago. Their record was the worst since Rich Rod's first year in 2001. One of his quotes did stand out to me, though, Rodney. Here it is. He says he's looking closely at tape from last Last year's Texas A&M, Auburn, and Oklahoma games. The three things those things have, games have in common, spread teams, a lot of run. What, what do you think he can gain from watching that film? Well, and that's what they do. And, again, I know that's probably, uh, you know, he sees some things there that he feels like they can pr possibly take advantage of. But, you know, again, when you look at the, the two teams right now as we speak now, I mean, I think there's a vast difference in terms of talent. So uh, yeah, you he, have the he's right. He's going to need every day he can get preparing. <laughs> right. And you saw in that graphic a second ago, 24-point underdog West Virginia is to Alabama. Several of the players that he's going to see on last year's game film have now moved on, and they're in the NFL. In their place come other guys who will be moving on to the NFL next year. Mel Kuyper, Jr. 
Jr. of ESPN released a position ranking for draft eligible players this past week. He loves several key players from that tied team. The list includes a guy who hasn't even seen the field, Jacob Coker to Amari Cooper, that guy TJ Yeldon, Landon Collins, who will be juniors this year. Here's the list. He has Coker as the fifth best quarterback coming out, TJ Yeldon the third best running back, uh, Cooper and Collins both at the top of their positions, and Trey DePriest the fifth best inside linebacker. And of course, that means that's only if those guys do decide to come out and forego their final year of eligibility. Much more Tyler Insider TV is coming up. Alabama basketball gets some good news on an incoming player who should help Anthony Grant's team immediately. Plus, Coach Grant will have to fill a pretty huge hole made by our next guest. Trevor Relliford joins us on the phone. He'll update us as he prepares for the NBA draft. And as always, we are welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information right there. Go ahead and give us a call. Send us an email or tweet us on social media, and we'll mention uh, your question or you give us a shout-out. I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> Hashtag Tider Insider TV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. It's Tider Insider TV. We'll be right back after the break. Well, it was welcome news for Anthony Grant. Word came down this week that Christoph Varadell, a transfer from Chaminade College by way of Florida Gulf Coast, it's Dunk City for those of you who don't know who they are. He was cleared to join the Tide this year. He's going to wear jersey number 13. He's going to join Ricky Tarrant and Michael Kessens as eligible transfers this year. And no matter how many guys Coach Grant brings in, he's going to need a boatload of them yeah. to replace our first guest tonight. We welcome former Alabama guard Trevor Relliford to the show on the Med Center Hotline. It sounds weird saying former Alabama yeah, guard does. Trevor Relliford. Trevor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Well, first things first, what, what have you been doing? What's been going on since you left Alabama? I know you graduated. Uh, what's been going on off or on the court for you since uh, you left? Uh, I mean, like, soon as I left uh, Alabama, I started uh, training in Indianapolis at a place called St. Vincent's, and I was there for, like, like a month and a half just working out, just preparing for a uh, workout. And, I mean, after that, I just I did, like, routine workouts with uh, Houston, Chicago, and Utah. And, I mean, pretty much now it's just, like, it's just a waiting process to see what's going to be in and then just wait, wait until draft day and, and see if my name gets called and if not, then just uh, get ready for summer league and, and go to free agent route. Right, and, and what are teams telling you when, when you go through that workout? Uh, what are teams looking for from you that they don't see on tape? And, and what are they telling you once you're done? Uh, I mean, teams just, teams just really want me to, uh, to come in and uh, just show that I can defend uh, and, I mean, just compete with, with other guys that I, I really didn't get to face throughout the year and, um, and, and just show that I can shoot the ball and that I improved in that. In that uh, category of my game, and and then just things like that, and I mean a lot of teams that I, I came in and I competed well and played and played to my abilities, like like they seen me all all four years out of Alabama, and it's I mean it's just a lot of teams don't have a lot of draft picks, some do, and it's just one team to fall in love with with you, and that's and that's what I need right now. There you go. Now, did you did you have a favorite team growing up, or is there a team that you would be like, hey, you know, it'd be it'd be awesome to play for for X amount or X team? Uh, I don't think I really had a favorite team growing up. I mean, I know I watched the Bulls, of course, but uh, <laughs> but I don't really think I had a favorite team. And and, and right now, I mean, I, I like any team right now. <laughs> Whoever decides right. to pick me or yeah. give me a chance, I I love them like. I love them from day one. <laughs> well, the Kansas City Kings were gone by the time Trevor came up. <laughs> Trevor, kind of want to reflect on your career at Alabama. I mean, you had a sensational career. You, you're the career leader in steals, fourth leading score in the history of the program. I think you started like 126 of the 100, 134 games that you participated in. I mean, you just had a standout career. I mean, kind of reflect back on, on some of the highlights uh, to you of your career here at Alabama. Uh, it was... It was it was a great four years at at uh, in Alabama. Um, from day one, I just remember Coach Grant just bringing me in, just saying that he was he was gonna uh, put the ball in my hands and he had a lot of confidence in me. And he, he just he just like wanted to see me do great do great things while I was in. And, I mean, from that day forward, I, I just really didn't couldn't let him down, couldn't let myself down, as well as my family and friends either. So I think that's the thing that helped me out the most. And 
I mean, I enjoyed some of the big wins, too, that we had in there, like I guess they touched my freshman year. Uh, some of the buzzer beaters I had while I was in college, all great memories that I, that I never could forget. And, I mean, just being able to compete in Alabama and just being around all these great fans and, and just that atmosphere around campus was, was just great. Now, obviously, you know, a disappointing final year uh, led to a lot of uh, speculation about your coach, Coach Grant. Um, he's getting this year to kind of hopefully right that ship. Uh, what about Coach Grant would you would you say to uh, kind of, I guess, comfort Alabama fans who might not be so sold on him? I mean, uh, I mean, just for me, I mean, just check his resume. I mean, he came from winning programs. He, he coached winning programs. I mean, he's, he's going to get it there. And I know every player in locker room, every coach. And, I mean, every fan should have his back and, and know that he's going to get Alabama on the right page. Cause that's been his goal from day one. And I think he did a good job good job doing it the whole four years I was there. I mean, some think we had a slip in last year. But, I mean, I, I felt like we all we all gave it our all. We, we, we bought in and we were saying it. It was just a tough year. And next year, I mean, sky's the limit for those guys. They got, they got three uh, – Three transfers coming is going to be eligible to play, and and, and all those guys can, can really play, and, and it's going to help out like guys like Levi and Coop. So I mean, make make sure people people will see with all this the hard work and and all, and all the years before it, it just helped this team coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, Trevor, uh, Trevor, Coach uh, Grant's really a low-key guy. People really on the outside don't get a real, you know, glimpse of what he's really like. I mean, you've been there. You've been around him as a player for four years. He recruited you. T tell us a little bit about Coach Grant, uh, the man and the coach. I mean, he's, he, I mean, once you get to campus, he's he just like he, he just like the dad or somebody like that. He's he going he gonna to keep it. He's going to keep it straight up with you from, from day one. You need anything, he, he, I mean, he can do it. He's gonna do it. He's gonna go out his way and do it. And um, I mean, him being quiet, he, he can be quiet at times. I mean, when he's doing business, of course he's gonna be quiet. But other than that, I mean, he he laughs, he joke around, and I mean, he just he just uh he just straight up guy. And finally, Trevor, any big draft draft night plans? I mean, are you gonna just be? It's gonna be a low key event, or what are you gonna plan on doing on draft night? Uh, I think I, I think it'll probably be uh, just a low key event with a lot of my family and friends. And we'll probably just sit around and uh, just watch the whole draft and I mean just just enjoy the process, knowing that that um, I was I was able to be in a position to even get a chance at the end of the draft and, and and just enjoy the process and, and just see what happens. Well, the good news, Trevor, that if you don't go the NBA route, you get to go overseas and play. And, and tour the world, so that would be great. Trevor, thanks so much to, for joining us tonight. We we're, we're, we're really appreciate the time. No no problem, any time. All right, thanks. thanks. For Roll Tide. <laughs> All right, thanks. What a great guy. I mean, he's always very fun to cover, very fun guy to, uh, to get to know when he was at Alabama. Next up on Tider Insider Television, an update on Alabama baseball as they head into the offseason. A couple of players aren't going to be back with the Tide in 2015. We're going to update you on who. And next, we're welcoming your phone calls, the emails, and tweets. You see the information right there on your screen. Go ahead and interact with Tider Insider TV right now. Give us a call, send us an email, or contact us on Twitter. We're going to be right back. The only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV returns after the break. Mitch Gaspar is going to have two big holes to fill on his pitching staff this week. Spencer Turnbull signed a professional contract with the Detroit Tigers, foregoing his final year of eligibility at Alabama. We also learned that John Keller is going to miss all of 2015 after elbow surgery. Tough break for the Crimson Tide on the baseball field. Time now to head to the Med Center Hotline. That's Med Center Hotline for the first time tonight. We've got Charles from Sylacauga. Charles, what can we help you with tonight, sir? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Charles, how are you doing? All right. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to know when Nick Saban going to change that defense from a 3 4 to a 4 3. Uh, well, I, I don't think, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? <laughs> well, first of all, Charles, you know, one thing about Nick Saban's defense is it's multiple. He does do use a lot of four-man fronts. Uh, they're not con constantly in a three-man 
uh, front, 3-4. So they do switch it around, and I think you're going to see Alabama continue to, you know, right. vary their fronts and vary their defense. So it, it is a multiple right. defense. And, and, you know, even with some of the kind of the concerns, and I think where that comes from is a lot of times the, the spread teams have Alabama fans kind of worried that, well, maybe the 3-4 doesn't work anymore. Well, but it, it, I think it's it kind of depends on the situation, right. you know, in the game. And uh, certainly Alabama's – you, you know they're they're prepared defensively for whatever they face right. in terms of their scheme. Right. All right. Next up, we got Rick from Brent. Rick, what do you got for us tonight? How are y'all tonight? Great. How are you, buddy? Fine. I've got some real concerns about Lane Kiffin because okay. he doesn't have the best reputation, and I was wondering what you thought about the new offense coming in. Well, let me ask you first, Rick. When you say reputation, I, I, I'm kind of unclear what you mean. Well, I think because he just packed up and left, and he he, fat, he fired his father, and uh, he just hasn't won very much. Well, first of all, I think when you look at him uh, at Tennessee, if you're talking about when he packed up and left, you know, certainly, I mean, that's happened before in coaching. I mean, some people have certainly questioned that. I'm not you know, disregarding what you say, Rick, or that concern, but, you know, he had an opportunity to take his dream job at USC, so... You know, you really in some ways can't blame him for that. As far as firing his father, I think that was probably a mutual parting. It was something that had to be done, their defense time that I can ever really remember. Right. He ended up his senior year with 2,800 yards passing, 27 mm -hmm. touchdowns. I mean, he was really a good quarterback. Right. And I think that Lane Kiffin was a big part of that. Well, and let's, let's let, him, uh, let him coordinate one game sure. <laughs> before we get him out of town. All right, what we're going to do now, we're going to take a quick email. And this comes from Robert in Homewood. He asked, what do you, who do you think will start at nose tackle quickly? Let's uh, try to get to that. Well, I mean, again, and I think that's a difficult question to answer. Uh, Brandon Irie's back. I think he'll certainly play. You have Darren Lake that uh, has been a backup. I think when you look at it, you may see Ashawn Robinson at nose guard every now and then. Certainly he plays defensive end as well. Jaron Reed, there you see him, number 90. You could possibly see him at the nose in some, some situations. Again, it could be situational. Uh, you know, you might even see the freshman Josh Frazier at the nose spot, you know, on occasion. I mean, all of those guys probably could mix in. I may be forgetting someone else, but, you know, I think you could see several guys at that spot depending on the situation and circumstance. There you go. All right, still more TITV coming your way, including a Twitter hoax from a former Crimson Tide offensive lineman. This is a good story. And coming up, more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. You see the information right here on the screen. Come on back. Tighter Insider TV continues after the break. Hey, we all know ex-Alabama offensive lineman Evan Mathis is known for his outrageous personality, so it wasn't really a big surprise when the tweet of his went viral. $64,000 restaurant bill, though right. impressive, it was revealed as a fake, meaning right. that he didn't haze the Eagles rookie by making them pay that crazy bill. He did have some fun with it. Now, Rodney, what, what's the highest bill that you've ever had to pay at a restaurant? <laughs> Maybe 150, <laughs> maybe. When it's like 50, my eyes start getting big, and well, I'm just like, I oh, man, that. I'm looking for someone to hand it off to. <laughs> Let's uh, go back to the Med Center hotline. Here we go. We've got Ron and Oakman. Ron, go ahead. Yeah, uh, who do you think, I want y'all's opinion, who do you think will be the starting quarterback of the 2014 season? You want to go first, uh, Well, I mean, I think it's an obvious answer at this point in the uh, – in the season or in the off season, I guess uh, my guess would be Jacob Coker. You don't bring in a guy from a, a G, or from a different another program who was almost beating out the Heisman Trophy winner and uh, sit him on the bench. Well, I think you know we showed earlier yeah. that the uh, uh, Mel Kiper's uh, projections. I mean, right or wrong, I mean they're, they're, he's number the number five quarterback in Mel Kiper's projections because people think very highly of Jacob Coker. You know, with that said, he's got to come in and he's got to prove himself. He's got to go through. Uh, fall camp and win the job and you know I think the expectation for most people is that Jacob Coker will be the starter but you know that's not certainly not anything uh, about uh, Blake Sims right. in terms of uh, uh, negative I think mm -hmm. when you look at Blake Sims he's done a great job he really developed in spring practice came a long way and again I think you have to give credit for how much progress he made to Lane Kiffin Absolutely. when we were talking about Kiffin earlier and uh, also Cooper Bateman made mm -hmm. a lot of progress but I would say this, I would expect that Jacob Coker will be the starting quarterback, and I do think Blake Sims will have a role. That's, right. that's me. I do think that you, you'll probably see him more than maybe 
than what we've seen him in the past. And, and there's never anything wrong with having more than one guy ready. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Let's get to an email real quick. This one comes from Greg in Mountain Brook. He asks, will Grant Hill have a breakout year on the offensive line? Rodney? Well, I, I think Grant Hill has a great opportunity. Uh, he's got to find a spot when you look at it. Austin Shepard seems to be entrenched at right tackle. I think Cameron Robinson has a great shot to nail down that left tackle spot. You have Ari Quanjo back at the left guard. You have Ryan Kelly back you know, at center. So I think when you look at Grant Hill, you know, he could be a backup at one of the tackles. He could be a, you know, maybe win that right guard spot if, if he competes there with Leon Brown. I mean, it's really difficult to tell. I do think that Grant Hill is a, is a talented guy and he's going to have a chance to, to win a spot. Yes. All right, so we'll see come uh, fall here in a little bit. It's going to be here before we know it. We're going to wrap up this edition of Tider Insider TV by congratulating, congratulating some more national champions coming up next. That is coming up. It's becoming a tradition around here. We're live on Tider Insider TV, and we're coming back after the break. Reed win the discus and Ramona Burchill win the 100 meter championship. Congratulations to them. Before we get out of here, thanks to Buddies. We're going to go there after the show. Thanks for joining us tonight. Gary Harris is back next week on TITV. Say bye, Rodney. See you later next week. <laughs> Roll Tide. <laughs>